Okay, welcome everybody. This is Pimp My Resume, the instructions for resume part two. And you don't understand that title. Uh, there's a MTV show on about 15 years ago called Pimp My Ride. I've given you, where's my laser pointer? Where is my laser pointer? There we go. Uh, an example uh, episode also was so popular it was parodied, my, one of my favorite parodies. Okay, the outline of today's uh, talk before we get to the instructions. The internet is not your friend. Your resume sucks. You're abusing your resume and that's about the informational interview. Caveats or warnings or things. Should I actually say your resume sucks? I'm your professor. Uh, well, number one, it probably does. And number two, uh, these uh, topics in this class on the resume, we're going to return to the resume in a little bit. And then also uh, the topics about uh, interviewing. These are very controversial in my class. Students just really don't understand what I'm talking about. Sometimes they don't really incorporate what I'm asking them. Uh, other times uh, they are resistant. Uh, which is odd, but I think that you know some forcefulness on my part is needed. Uh, another caveat is I've read a lot of resumes. Remember I had a stint outside of academia where I had to hire people, a lot of people, and supervise them. So not only did I have to hire them, I had to deal with them once hired. So I've gotten a lot of experience reading resumes. Also, I, I have a PhD, so it gives me a little bit more you know experience and broad broadness and knowledge than just somebody who uh, works in HR. Uh, and then finally, I'm almost tempted to say some of these rules won't, won't apply to you or don't apply to you. Uh, and this will become clearer as we look on the other topics such as resume part three and the job interview questions. But I really believe that everything I'm going to say in this lecture and when we get to the webinar on job interview questions and when we get to uh, resume three, all of these things apply to you. Uh, so uh, I'm really tempted to, to actually go back and edit this out, but I think uh, you know that's what I hear a lot. Students are trying to understand, you know, they don't really accept what I'm saying and they're trying to understand it and so one of the things they come up with is, well, you know, what Dr. Ashton is saying really doesn't apply to us at this level of our careers or in terms of looking at a job. And so I wanted to bring that up and say that, yes, but they really do apply to you. So you should pay attention. And here's a, you know, a dog's uh, resume. You can go back and stop the video and look at that. Okay, our first topic, the internet is not your friend in the job search process. And uh, the first topic, bad email addresses. And here are some email addresses I've actually gotten email from here at York. Dainty Babe, Sexy Baby, Blazing Cutie, uh, D. Brooklyn Dawn, Deranged, Baby Girl, Lovable, Blazing Cutie, Hot Bod Dreams. So the one thing you need to do is make sure that whatever email address you're using does not follow this uh, uh, you know, pattern. In fact, I would suggest you use your York uh, student email address. I think that you can keep it after you graduate, so you should uh, go ahead and keep it. Or even better, go to Gmail and get a Gmail address with your first and last name. And then finally, uh, only your email address. Uh, don't you know, list your physical post off, postal address, that is your home address. Uh, the reason why is that uh, you know, if you're in HR you know that this provides information about your race or your ethnicity uh, or your background which is not pertinent to the uh, job interview process and good HR specialists will try to make sure that uh, people making job decisions are not exposed to information like that to prevent a lawsuit over uh, unfair hiring practices. So just including your email address on the resume 
is a good idea. It certainly shows uh, the people in HR that you understand what you're talking about. Next thing, Google yourself. Uh, make sure that it's good. Google is now in the 21st century in 2000 teens. Uh, it is your resume more or less. So Google your name, Google different versions of your name and see what comes up. Then uh, go and check social media uh, and check the privacy settings on your social media. So I have Facebook because I'm old. Uh, you probably have Snapchat chat or Instagram and you can probably do the same thing on those uh, social apps. But you can go here and you can set up uh, privacy settings so who can see uh, your uh, home page, who can see your front page, who can see whatever. And on Facebook, for example, you can go to a certain page and you can view your uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, feed as whoever, as certain people or as the public does. And so you can see that if somebody in the public who is not on my friends list uh, finds William Ashton, they see a picture of Luna and a picture of uh, the hula girl uh, ornament on my dashboard and that's about it so uh, I could change that if I wanted to but I'm not looking for work so I don't care okay so that's you know screening out the bad about Google is now your resume but now let's try to direct them to good stuff uh, do you have a Twitter handle that's just that you just use professionally? Well, maybe you want to get one. If you get one, use it, but make sure to keep it professional. And so as you build up a Twitter presence you know, professionally, then that will come up on Google searches. Also LinkedIn, uh, uh, you only get LinkedIn if you can actually do something interesting with it or post something interesting. In fact, I'm concerned about the privacy issues I've been hearing uh, and the uh, you know, uh, way that LinkedIn is trying to make money off of uh, you know, uh, its members. Uh, so I'm not really suggesting LinkedIn, but I think Twitter is a good way to build up a good Google resume. Okay, so let's turn to resumes. What happens when you send in your resume? It will be reviewed by a computer. Uh, you know, people usually don't look at resumes uh, first. Uh, there's something known as applicant tracking software. And one of the first things that the applicant tracking software will do is it'll scan for keywords. Uh, these keywords are uh, industry specific. And so I can't really give you keywords for your industry because it's based on your industry. So some suggestions, uh, products or apps that you would use in your industry, like Word, that would be a keyword. Uh, also, I would suggest possibly going to Onet and uh, you know, uh, seeing if Onet can give you any examples for keywords in terms of uh, skills or uh, you know, knowledge or abilities. Uh, for example, I uh, just Google searched uh, keywords, resume keywords for HR uh, assistant, and I got this on the top of the search, which may or may not be that useful. Uh, benefits and compensation, collective agreement, uh, conflict resolutions, these would be keywords that the computers would be scanning the resumes for. And of course, uh, if you set up a specific uh, you know, uh, search in a uh, you know, applicant tracking package based on the uh, ad, then you would scan for terms that you mentioned in the ad that you're specifically looking for. So getting past the computer, let's first talk about the old-fashioned way optical character recognition. If a uh, organization is asking for a paper resume that is mail us a resume, most likely what's going to happen is they're going to use OCR, they're going to send it through a scanner, and uh, the scanner is going to translate it into text and send it to the computer. So all of these rules are important uh, if you're uh, you know, uh, sending in a paper resume. I also didn't uh, mention on this list, but it's also important, 
uh, that you shouldn't put in images of any type, like fancy backgrounds, fancy borders. That will just mess up OCR like crazy. So it has to be pretty bland and pretty blank. I'm not going to go through these individually. You can stop the video and look at them. And actually you should because uh, it's going to be important to you in the assignment. Uh, also, you know, let's say that they ask for an electronic uh, resume. Uh, so make sure you send them the right resume. So make sure you give it a right, uh, the correct uh, uh, file name. For example, this is a classic real life example. Vanessa here applied for a job and she said she was attaching her resume and she didn't. She actually attached this picture of Nicolas Cage by accident. True story. Uh, so create a new file name for it that's like Bill's resume or something like that or something very obvious. Something that probably will be noticed by whoever's reading it. And then save it as a text file or a PDF file. Uh, you're doing this so that uh, any computer can basically read it. Uh, if you get into more exotic files, you know, everybody could probably read a docx, but then pages, uh, you know, I can't read page files. So, you know, you have to be careful about that. Okay, so let's say that you're lucky and the computer flags your resume for a human to look at it. Well, guess what that means? That human will look at the resume and at the most for 15 seconds. Now, this is not just an idea I have, uh, but it's actually based on research. They've actually researched how long people uh, in HR will actually look at a resume. And, uh, you know, some studies say that people will look at a resume for 15 seconds. Uh, so we talk about the 15 second rule. That is, your resume will only be read for 15 seconds, so you need to put the important stuff in the first 15 seconds. Or actually, other studies have found that people will look at resumes for only 6 seconds. Some studies have actually concluded people look at resumes for 2 seconds. So we're talking about a 15 second or less rule. So the important stuff in your resume has to come in that first 6 seconds or 15 seconds. Okay, so what should you put in that 15 second period uh, at the top of your resume? Uh, to me, you need to present the info that you need to do the job because that's what's going to get the rest of the resume read is if you can catch the person's attention and you see that right now, starting tomorrow, right away, uh, you can do the job and that's critically important. No objectives, no skill summary and then list your best job that prepares you for this current job first. Because again, if you list the job that is the best for getting you this job at the end of your resume, because you you have to go chronological, uh, then they're not going to see that. Let's look at some examples. So this is a resume that a student uh, submitted a semester or so ago. Uh, you have really nice a uh, blue uh, header here, which will of course screw up optical character recognition. You have blue text here uh, with lo uh, line breaks, which will screw up a lot of out optical text recognition. So this shouldn't work. Uh, so let's start the timer. Professional summary, service-oriented receptionist with one and a half year background in a medical. Oh, isn't that six seconds? Okay, so it's over. If I go by the 15 second rule, we'll get down to through skills and ability. But depending upon what type of job this person wants, uh, probably uh, if you want to be a medical receptionist, this is a great resume because it will tell people in six seconds that you are you have experience with being a medical receptionist. Uh, so. Uh, get that professional summary, get those skills and abilities out of there. Here's another one somebody uh, submitted. A uh, nice blue uh, marginal line and blue header line, which of course will screw up optical uh, text recognition. And so they start with the objective, a company where I can utilize my skills by helping the company grow and expand, and which will allow me to develop 
uh, experience while enhancing the company's productivity and reputation. So if that's what's really important to you to get across, put your objective first. However, when I was reading resumes, uh, these would bore me to death because they're cliched, and I'll, I'll get to that specifically next. And then we get through objectives very quickly, or frankly, I would skip objectives when I read resumes. And so I get to professional experience. Uh, Nike uh, running Upper East Side athlete. Uh, so basically, if you go by my rule of getting across at the uh, the job that you you can do the job you want, then I would suggest that this person has a good resume here if they're interested in going into retail again. And here's another one. Uh, objective, well, of course, I skipped that. Education, uh, okay, you're going to graduate soon. I uh, went to high school, did well in high school, and now look where we are. Uh, it's about 10 seconds in, and I'm going to quit. Uh, if we do continue on, uh, here's somebody who, uh, you know, is in customer service at Marshalls. So if Again, you want to have a job in customer service at Marshalls. Uh, this is a great uh, resume. Uh, but if you want to do something with your human resources degree, uh, maybe not the best way to go about it. So I uh, get rid of all those and put the experience that makes me want to be hired for the job I'm applying for. So. Resume tips, just to uh, summarize, include, uh, include key terms uh, because the resume will be computer screen. I'm kind of redundant there, but what the heck. List education first. If education is important, it's only important when you're dealing with licensing. When you have to be licensed to do a job, and part of that licen licensing uh, is due to education or a degree, list that. But uh, your degree from York is not really that important. It should not be listed first. Uh, most likely it should be listed last or not at all. Also, don't list references. Nobody cares about references uh, on your resume. Uh, you know, if you get interviewed, then somebody will probably ask you for references. Uh, however, uh, references are oftentimes not checked. The reason why is that they're pretty useless. Uh, at uh, one place I worked, our lawyer uh, told us that we should not give any references uh, to a past for pa past employees. Uh, we can only tell them uh, whoever calls for a reference that yes, this person was employed. We can tell them their start date, their end date, and their job title. Anything else, we're not allowed to tell them because the lawyer doesn't want to worry about us getting sued for what we say. And that's why nobody cares about references anymore. And then finally, uh, one page, especially at your uh, uh, tenure in your fields, uh, a one-page resume would be best. Uh, just tossing this in, cliches, these objective statements are always cliched. That is, they're things everybody says and so if everybody says them, they don't make you stand out. They make, look, make you look like everybody else. An entry-level marketing position within a growing company in order to maximize my skills and abilities. Well, you know, everybody wants that, don't they? And also avoid vague statements. Has expressed interest initiative in increasing responsibility and productive productivity. So they've said that they were interested in being more productive. That's what that statement's really saying. That's not a skill or ability. So if somebody actually stops to think about that, that will look very bad on you. So av avoid those cliches. Avoid buzzwords or jargon from different fields. Uh, but do use action words. So I've been telling you about things to avoid, things to say in your resume. Uh, you want to see some examples? This is from a study done of 2,000 hiring managers. And here are the worst terms the uh, hiring managers uh, voted for in this survey or indicated on this survey. 
thinking outside of the box, results driven, team player, hard working. I've seen so many of these on resumes that I've reviewed from students here at York. Best resume terms by these 2000 recruiters. Achieved, improved, trained, mentored, managed, created, influenced. Also, I haven't talked about this, so I will now. Uh, you should always include when you're talking about your qualifications or what you did at a different job, you should use action terms. Uh, and here, uh, this website has 185 powerful verbs that you can use for action terms in your resume. Merged, modified, overhauled, customized. Uh, you should take any, uh, you know, uh, term that you use in your resume and think about making it more action oriented. And then also quantify it. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, I see people say things such as I was responsible for cash control throughout daily operations. That was a mistake. Okay, so, uh, but quantifying it actually makes it more believable. Responsible for cash control of approximately $3,500 daily. So you can quantify money, you can quantify time, uh, implemented training and gu uh, training guides and procedures. Yeah, that sounds great. But then implemented training guides and procedures which reduced employee training by 50%, uh, percent, cross out hours there. And then amounts, confirm and schedule appointments. Okay, that's great. Confirmed and scheduled 30 clients per day. That makes it sound more impressive. Okay, so you finish the resume, proofread it. Uh, again, uh, people who read resumes, 60% said they'd uh, reject the resume based on one error. So don't have any errors on your final resume. And then, you send it in to like monster.com, you post it someplace, you mail it out, and well, when you post it on monster.com, when you send it out uh, cold, 95% of the resumes don't get read at all. And so you're abusing your resumes by just sending them out cold. What you should do is do the informational interview. Uh, this was a very popular thing and people just stop talking about it. I don't know why because I still think it's great. The whole process is that you work with contacts and people in your uh, professional and social networks. Uh, because as somebody who would hire people, I would be very dubious and after I get more, I got more experience, I'm increasingly dubious of hiring people just based on their resumes. I, I want to know about them from somebody I trust. And so the informational interview is a way of you know building up that social you know or professional network. So you need to identify people uh, who do the hiring in your field. And you work through your social contract contacts or professional contacts. Uh, and then you contact them. You give them a call or you send them an email and you say that you may remember me because I did that internship at your uh, you know, hospital a couple years ago or I uh, did an internship this or you spoke at uh, you know, the leadership club at York College and I met you right afterwards. Uh, and, or you know, later on you'll say so and so suggested me to you. And, well, I thought that you'd be a good resource person to talk to. I'm looking for a job in your field, and I really think it would benefit me if I could just talk to you about your strategies and your advice about looking for work in the field. And all really I want is your advice and just 10 minutes of your time. And you butter them up, say, you know, like you really, you know, uh, you know, if you saw them talk at York, say that your talk was fantastic, ingratiate yourself. Uh, if you 
uh, you know, uh, you know, was referred to this person by uh, somebody else. You say, well, Ms. X said that you were a fantastic person in this job, or uh, Ms. X said that, you know, she really liked you when uh, you were her boss. And so just flatter them, you know, don't go overboard, but, you know, just, you know, get the idea that just 10 minutes of your time, I just want some advice. And then when they say yes, well, if they say no, then that's it. But if they say yes, go in for the interview. And again, 10 minutes, even if they want you to stay longer, say, nope, 10 minutes are gone. That's all I, I said I'd take your time, uh, you know, so I'm going to have to leave. Whatever you do, don't ask for a job. But again, as you said, ask them for advice. Who's hiring in your field? Who do you know is hiring in your field? Uh, bring them a copy of your resume. Show them your resume. Say, do you have any things or pointers about how I could change my resume? Now you have them looking at your resume. And then finally, uh, ask for contacts, people that they know. So then you go back at the beginning of the cycle. And so now you can say, well, Ms. X suggested I contacted you. And she felt you'd be a, re a good resource person. And uh, so now if I was hiring for this company, I'd know that, well, at least you know you know, Ms. X, and I know Ms. X, and, you know, she's a, a reasonable person, so, you know, I feel kind of safe dealing with you. And then remember to follow up with a thank you note. And you can find more here at this website. And that's probably my best advice about, you know, trying to look for a job. And we'll talk more as the semester goes on. Okay, so resume number two. Uh, what I'd like you to do is edit the resume of the, ori of the student's original post. Uh, so I'll ask you to claim a student's uh, you know, uh, original post, claim their resume, and then I'd like you to edit it. Uh, I'd like you to make it scannable. Uh, get out any yucky formatting stuff they put in, and also try to include keywords. I want you to follow my advice about the 15 second rule. Uh, I definitely want you to put in action verbs and I want you to quantify things. I definitely want you to remove bad stuff like vagueness, cliches, uh, physical address and references. And then finally in your reply post I'd like you to uh, post a copy of the original assignment and then post your edit with it. And so that's the resume to assignment. All right.